All right. So should we put our one-on-one -on -one prices, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one service prices and package prices on our website? Because there are some business marketing consultants, coaches who recommend that we don't. And here's my thought on this. Um, it, it really, there, there's a, there is a mixed camp on this because of course, like, you know, we mentioned there, there are people who recommend that we don't do it. And the reason they don't, they recommend we don't do it is because the idea is we want to get people on the phone. We want to get people to be in touch with us, asking us about it so that now that we're in touch with them, we're more likely to build rapport and be able to sign them up for, for our services. Uh, and I understand that makes sense to that degree. My perspective about it is that as a consumer myself, as a client of other people, I have always appreciated seeing the price right up front because I want to just be able to quickly budget, okay, this person is way too pricey for my budget right now. And I don't even want to be in a conversation where they convince me otherwise. Um, and this person's price, oh, okay, that's, that's reasonable. Maybe it's a little stretch, but it's still reasonable. And I like this person. I like this person's content or services. And yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd be, it's like, then by the time I'm on the phone with that person or in email conversation, I don't, I'm not going to get a price. I'm not going to get sticker shock because I already know what the price is. So I'm just asking questions. Oh, Hey, Evelyn. Um, uh, you know, uh, your, your coaching, I'm just wondering, do you work on these issues or that issue? You know, whatever. So Evelyn, is that helpful? So, so basically for me, I, and thank you for Evelyn for asking the question. Like for me, I like to, you know, because it's what I like from a client experience perspective, I therefore do the same thing for others, uh, golden rule kind of thing. Um, now, the, the, the one place where I'm like, okay, I definitely see where people shouldn't put price. It's like in the corporate setting, it can be tacky when your package for one day corporate is $5,000 or $10,000. It can be tacky to put that price on there. And corporate knows that. Corporate's like, yeah, we don't really care about the price. Pay us five. We can pay you five or 10K, whatever. Like in those cases where the client really doesn't care about the price, maybe you're serving, uh, maybe you're serving high net worth individuals. You know, you're, you're serving wealthy families and they, they can pay you, you know, 30K a year is really not a big deal for them. Then you don't have to put 30K, you know, so in, in only in those cases. But for most of us, we aren't in that market. And so we are serving individual consumers who are not necessarily high net worth families. And so I think it does, uh, I think it is courteous to put the price there. And therefore, what we are doing is building rapport not having to force people to come to a conversation to build rapport, but we're building rapport and authority through our content, through our webinars, through our um, collaborations, our joint ventures. People come to us and they already are interested in being in conversation with us. Um, and if the price, by the way, and this, the, the other good reason to put prices on there is it saves us time, right? Because if <laughs> we get on the phone with someone and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm, I love your content, love your service. And how much do you charge? Oh, you charge two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. My God, I did. I had no idea because I was I was hoping that I could find a coach for fifty dollars an hour, and that's really my my top of my. It's like, and that in that conversation, both parties feel badly, right? Because the the other party, my our potential client, has sticker shock, right? And then like, oh my God, someone charges $350 an hour or whatever it is. We, we, we may be justified in charging, right? And we feel badly because not, oh man, one of my uh, you know, true fans or ideal fans you know, can only pay 50 an hour. And, and, and yes, you might say, well, once you're on the call with them or in conversation, you can direct them towards a cheaper service that you have, a group program or something. That may be true. Still, I think where we should spend our time is not justifying our price on a call. But where we should spend our time is building rapport and authority in content with, you know, collaborations, you know, referral sources with webinars or, or products or other kinds of things. But Evelyn, is that helpful? Do you want to ask anything else about this? Um, yes, that's very helpful. I'm just thinking that um, you will put your one hour prizes and like even your package prizes, six sessions, 12 sessions, whatever. Is that how you will do it? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, so I, I think I think having some pricing 
on the page is courteous for and time saving, efficient uh, for everybody. Um, I can see where you might say, "Here's my hourly pricing." Um, so, okay, you could, you could do it one one of two ways, and I'm going to share two ways and, and see what you think. You can either say, "Here's my hourly pricing. I charge." 250 per hour or whatever the pricing might be these days. However, if you decide you want to work with me in packages, a uh, package of six sessions or 12 sessions or a one-year package, there are discounts for each package and we can discuss what those discounts are. And, and that makes sense to me because they've already seen what the base price is. And then now they realize, okay, I can buy more and get discounts. So the other way of doing it is to start with um, you know, if you sign up for a package that you could be discounted up to a hundred, uh, up to 175 per session, meaning that that's your lowest possible price per session. If someone bought a one year package with you, you kind of put that price on the website so that it still gives some signal of what your price range is, but it gives people a sense of, Oh, 175, I think I can do it. And then once they're on the call with you, then well, then you have to explain the 175 is if they sign up for you know a 40 session package with you or something like that. So you could approach it one of one of two ways, and you may actually split test. You may actually create a split test using split testing tools such as Google Optimize, uh, which I talked about in the copywriting course. Like you could you could create two different sales pages, uh, and every visitor who goes to your sales page will automatically be directed randomly to one of these two versions. And you can see therefore which, how many inquiries you get per page. So that would be an interesting test to do. So, yeah. Thanks, that's uh, very helpful. Thank yeah, you. thanks Evelyn for asking.